Well, hello, hello. I guess I need to tell you folks something. So, our mission is ending. The girls have been camping all summer, and now it's getting to the end of that. But the reason that our mission is ending is because I can't do the work. <laughs> I thought 16-year-old Nancy answered the questions. Can you do picnic tables and bathrooms? Yes. Piece of cake? Of course. I did have a little bit of 67, 66-year-old Nancy would say, what are you saying, Nancy? Listen to yourself. But 16-year-old Nancy went ahead and said, yep, I'm in great physical shape, and I've got handyman skills. I don't know if they asked me handyman skills. I don't think so. They asked, can you move picnic table? You know the job. It's going to be a lot of moving picnic tables and a lot of bathrooms. There's, And I thought, I'll get through it somehow. I think we're supposed to do this. And so I said, sure. And I'd go home at night and 66-year-old Nancy would say, what the heck are you talking about? Are you an idiot? And anyway, 17-year-old Nancy won. And away we went. We did this mission, but um, I could never do the work. I could do I could do some of the work. And so because the truth was, the core truth was that I could not do the work, from that stemmed whole lots of things. Guilt, um, avoidance, um, complaining, um, deciding which work wasn't necessary. So from that one thing stemmed all of that. We'll be at the highway now, but we're going to the grass hut, which is totally worth it. Anyway, so from that one falsehood, which I convinced myself of, which was that I could do it, or I could, I could make it work. Now, in the in the blessing, like when you're called to be a missionary, you're set apart, and so. That's where the men who hold the priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood, they put their hands on your head and they set you apart for a calling and give you a blessing. And now the blessing is not from them, it's they make themselves pure and um, are able then to hear, have a better, have a better hear thing with the Lord, right? It's like a guitar. When you get that guitar in sync and those notes just wave like that. Car coming. Maybe I should pretend I'm not doing this. There. But I guess most people walk around with their camera in their hand facing themselves as they go places. <laughs> um... So when you when your life gets in sync with the Lord, when you let when you keep most of the darkness out and let in lots of light because of your choices, doing things that are happy and giving and loving and create love and create light. When you do those things, those good things, you know, you could say there's no right and wrong, there's no good and evil. But you know, there's light and dark. And if you want to call it that, if you want to believe that there's nothing wrong with anything you do, there's light and dark, and you are where you're choosing. So if you're choosing to think about things that keep you in the darkness, you know, like miserable stuff, like I don't like, and ick, and you know, me, me, me. If you, if you keep yourself, if you keep yourself in the dark, then you don't have the light, right? So anyway, so as you improve yourself and make better and better choices, you have more and more light. And so with that light, that light is like the wave of the, the wave of a guitar string, you know, when their two notes are just exactly the same and they do this whoa thing. 
Well, that's like being completely in tune. If you have your radio and it's not quite tuned right, it doesn't come through so clearly, right? Should I pretend I'm not talking to you again? We'll just pretend. There. Okay. So, um... So when your life is in tune with God, or when you are able to have the most light in your, in your being and in your life, well, you see, when you're in tune with the Lord, you can hear His voice. It's, I'm serious, you can hear it. It's, I'm, not, I'm not joking. And you know, years, years I thought, Wow, wouldn't it be awesome if you could just talk to God? Like if he was sitting in the chair right you and you could just talk to him and just clear up a lot of stuff? Wouldn't that be amazing? And now, I mean, I can't talk to him like he's sitting in the chair, but I can talk to him like he he's sitting in the chair I can't see, but he's still sitting in the chair. And I know that when I'm talking to him, he's right there, he's listening, wherever, however the ear thing works, you know. He's hearing it all. <sighs> anyway, so when you're set apart for a calling, the men who hold the priesthood, if they are living with their lives in a pure way, if they are making choices depending on... Um, I have to show it to you. You have to see it. There it is. You don't know what you're looking at, do you? So I'll just stand here and I will finish what I'm saying. So when a man holds a priesthood, the priesthood, the power of God, the priesthood is the authority to act with the power of God. And so you c they use God's power to set you apart, which gives you gives you something. It gives you you feel it. You know afterwards that you've. It's like the mantle. It's on you, and when, and afterwards, he gives you a blessing, and that blessing, if he is living his life purely, um, if he's just listening, the spirit will give him the words. And the blessing comes out. And that's the way you begin to pray. As your life you get more and more light in your life, then the prayers, the words of the prayers just come. It all boils down to our choices. And we think, oh, you know, that's old-fashioned stuff. This is, this is the way it is. But really, the light and dark thing never changed. Like, that has, is irrelevant for time have to put this down and pretend you're just down there looking at the sky. <sighs> I have to be able to be in one place at a time. Oh, here we have someone else. It's good to be down here. Okay, so anyway, so he gave me a blessing and in the blessing I was set apart to be a missionary, a service missionary at the Thomas S. Monson camp. And in that blessing, three times he said, he blessed me with courage. Three different times in that, it was, a, it was a pretty long blessing, you know. And three times he blessed me with courage and he also blessed me that I would remember to delegate. Or no, it's not delegate. He said, ask for help and have courage. And so um, I thought the courage was to do all that work. I didn't like all that work because it was work I wouldn't do. I wouldn't make my home and my my place look like that. You see this is where we are. This is this is how I am not I am not like other people. Other people like mowing their lawns and tending flower beds. I like watching what grows. It's all a science experiment around me. Will this grass be the only grass? You know, how high will this grass get? Look at the grass wave in the breeze. Look at the flowers from everything. There's always, even the grass has flowers. many reasons 
reasons why the work that I could not do, not just the picnic tables and the bathrooms, Willem, Willem said he would do the bathrooms, and so that was fine. But um, still, I could not do the work. And the, the, the truth, that was the truth, because the underlying thing was that we were there to do work. That's the only reason we were there. We were there to do some work, to prepare this camp, to man, manicure it and make it ready for all these teenage girls to come through the summer, you know, with their different units. And um, that was what we were there for. We weren't there to go camping. I mean, that was a little perk. But anyway, oh, this is such a beautiful place. I can't believe I'm not showing it to you. Look at this. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Anyway, I have to finish the story. So I, I um, finally, you know, like I had, I had, in order to hide my lie, it wasn't really a lie because I kind of believed I could, but I kind of knew I couldn't, but I believed it. And sometimes you think if you believe it enough, it'll work. And that was the way, that's kind of the way I operate. Anyway, and so um, we're just going to walk down here while I talk, and you'll just have to see this incredible place because I'm not finished talking. This is so neat. It's like so many different things now. I love it. It's perfect for me. Before, when it was just one thing, it wasn't perfect yet. It, I mean, it was cool, but it was just standing up in this field. And now look at this. This is like a fairy garden. Look at this, a cattail chair in the midst of the willow, which is all being woven into, a, into an arbor. But I do believe it's wet. 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 I, believe it's wet. I think there's a lot of willow leaves on the on there. That's what it was. It's not wet. It's a very old misshapen chair. Can we sit here and continue our conversation? Let me get this chair on right. right here we go. And let's hope these cattails hold up. Okay then, here we are. This looks cool to you. Let me look and see what it looks like. I just love this. This is awesome. <laughs> Amazing. I'm hidden from the road, yet I'm right beside the road. And I'm in the sunshine, and I'm about to have some shade. This is in a place where it was always a field. Anyway, so my the way I treat the earth is different than the way most people treat the earth. 99% of people treat the earth like um, earth and our, it's um, out, outdoors, like there's inside, which is where we all live all the time, and there's outdoors, which we go out into to do sports in or whatever, or to walk through and be uplifted by, to get revived. But it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's two separate worlds. We have our world in the house and our world outside. And outside is like secondary, right? Inside is like, this is the way I am imagining. This is the way that other people think. There is a lot of people, there are a lot of people that don't think that way. But I don't know very many of them. Now and then you run across them on YouTube. But, um, this is so awesome. Look where I am. This is so cool. So anyway, because the way I look at, at things, look at the earth, is so different from the way other people look at the earth, I couldn't do the work. Not only could I not do it physically, but in order to make yourself do something, you have to make yourself do it. You have to want to do it. And there were some of these things that were I did not think should be done. And I didn't do them. They got done by other people, but I didn't do them because I, I, I know that on the campground, 
and in the parameters of the world that we are in, it had to be done that way. You've got city girls coming, you know, and they're, <clears throat> you know, everything is, it's not a wilderness experience. It's a spiritual experience. And I guess, I don't know, I don't know, they don't teach the young girls all the, the lessons they used to. Everything used to be contrived. Everything was planned. You know, you will learn how to make campfires. You'll learn how to, um, you know, first aid. And they went through all this stuff like girl guides. 